Okay, everyone, this is a, uh, a second demonstration related to Chapter 1 of uh, ETE 335 networks, filters, and in particular, this one will focus on series and parallel resonant uh, devices. And the uh, demonstration I'm going to run for you today is actually with a crystal, which is a um, piezoelectric device, which is a device which actually, piezoelectric means that it vibrates under electrical stimulus. And crystals were a very important part of early radio circuits uh, because they could produce very stable oscillations and they could be used for very sharp filtering. The Q, and if you remember Q, two ways to determine Q, it is the frequency of resonance over the 3 dB bandwidth or the X of L term over the reactive term over the resistance for a series circuit or the resistance over the reactive term for a parallel circuit. So we're going to take a look at a crystal uh, circuit and see how to demonstrate the high Q nature on the oscilloscope. All right, here we're looking at three crystals. Uh, they come in different packages. The one to the left is a little bit of an older style. You'll see that it's marked with 2.6. That means it's a 2.6 megahertz crystal. Crystals are usually in the megahertz region. The one in the middle is um, not sure of the frequency, but you can actually see the quartz crystal element in the center. The kind of uh, solder points you see on the left and the right which come to the leads are actually connected to the crystal structure which is the circular element inside by some metallization and then they're brought outside to your circuit. This is the crystal we're actually going to test and you will notice it has three leads. Actually the two leads on the left are the only ones we care about. The third one would have been grounded by grounding the case of the crystal. We will set up the circuit and then we'll take some measurements. Okay, here's our circuit with the crystal. It's an extremely simple circuit. On one side we have a signal from the arbitrary waveform generator set up right now for 1.5946 megahertz. It's just a close value for our setup. The uh, other side goes to the scope. So in this case we are scope as our detector. The crystal itself is a complex series parallel resonance circuit. We'll, uh, we'll put the schematic up for a crystal and you can see that there are two paths in the crystal. One is a series resonant path and then a parallel capacitance making the overall crystal either series or parallel resonance. A little more complex than our simple models. But what we are going to do is we are going to dial up the signal close to the crystal frequency which is 3.57 megahertz. This is a color burst crystal and if you look at the display now we're at 3.59 megahertz 3.57 is where we want to be so we'll adjust that frequency. See if I can see both at one time. No, it's not too... If you notice between those two points you get a different display. So we're getting very close to the crystal frequency. Crystals have incredibly high Q values. So when I get closer, I'm going to get a closer display and I just go back and forth maximizing the value of the signal on the scope. We'll rescale here. Change our frequency of our generator a little bit more. There's the signal. OK, 
Keep going. Maximizing the signal always from the crystal. That's pretty close. So we are at 3.578760 megahertz. And that's the max signal we're getting through the crystal. So that'll be the series resonant point of the crystal. We're going to turn on averaging just to clean up the display. Okay, I have set up the scope to measure the voltage across the crystal and the RMS value on the scope. You will notice now that the crystal frequency being displayed on the scope is 3.589 or 59 uh, megahertz and the voltage, RMS voltage measured by the scope is around 1 volt RMS. Now why did I pick that to be 1 volt? Well I want to determine the Q of the crystal and the way I'm going to do that is measure the resonant frequency which is the frequency of peak response which I've already determined to be this value and then I'm going to find the 3 dB point so I can measure to where the signal goes to 0 0.707. So on the generator the resonant frequency is 3.578760 in megahertz, so 3.5776 megahertz. On the scope, now I will adjust the resonant frequency until the response is 0 0.707. Notice that it very, I'm making very small frequency changes actually in the hertz and I'm getting the changes. So the crystal is extremely high Q. I'm close there. Just one click away. 0 0.707 or 707 millivolts and the frequency is 3.578730 megahertz. So that is the lower frequency. Okay, we have located the upper 3 dB frequency, 700 millivolts, 0 0.707 volts roughly, and the frequency 3.578804.1. Okay, here's the quick calculation done in Excel. F0, or the resonant frequency, 3.57876 megahertz. The high frequency 3 dB, 3.5788 megahertz, and the low 3 dB frequency, 3.57873 megahertz. This gives us a bandwidth 3 dB of only 73 hertz, incredibly small bandwidth, actually too small for radio work with voice signals but okay for oscillators and then the Q by the calculation FO resonant frequency over bandwidth 3 dB is 48,493 or almost 50,000. No other devices will give you Q's of this high. Typical inductor Q's for RF work are around 100. The last thing I wanted to show you with a crystal circuit is actually a crystal oscillator. They come prepackaged for TTL oscillators with a, um, a can around them and power and ground are applied. Pin 14, pin 7 is typical just like TTL chips so that is the red for the power, green for the return and orange is actually the value we're measuring on the scope. And if we look at the display on the scope, it is a square wave oscillator. If we check the frequency, we can see that it's exactly 5.00 megahertz, which is the crystal oscillator frequency. This is one of the most popular uses of crystals in modern circuits as a very stable oscillator. Uh, another one of the most popular, popular usages of a crystal oscillator is actually right on your wrist. And that is your modern digital watch. Inside your watch is a crystal which is 32 
kilohertz, 32.768 kilohertz. If you divide 32.768 kilohertz by 2, you can divide down to exactly 1 hertz, which is obviously the one second count on your watch. That's it for crystals.